Hello everyone, I'm Sam Strader here for Human Hard Drive, and today on AVRC Tutorials we're going to be talking about interrupts. Um, we're going to actually just be talking about interrupts in general here, um, so that this lays the groundwork for other videos so that I don't have to, so that it's easier for you to understand. So with that, let's get started. Now in case you didn't know, the AVR microcontroller architecture is based around single core, meaning it can only follow one chunk of instruction at a time. So we've got our AVR here and our little core. And when I say it's a core, it's a physical core and it's able to follow only so many instructions. Now with other architectures like say ARM, which are able to control more than one core, what you're able to do is have more than one set of instructions working at the same time. So here we've got two set of two sets of instructions moving into two separate cores and it allows them to function at the same time so that you don't have to chop up your code. This allows you to do multiple things at once. Now AVR has built into its devices a means by which to do this and ARM has this as well but go with me here. AVR has built into it something called interrupts. And you can sort of think about this like uh, juggling, if you will. So here we've got our AVR, and you've got one hand. AVR only has one hand, one core. So it's able to take a chunk of code, throw it into the air, and then wait for it to come down. Whereas ARM has two hands. It ha so it's able to take chunk A, throw it into the air, and manage chunk B while it comes back down, and then manage chunk A while it's in the air, and then deal with chunk B as it lands back in hand. And yes, I know you can juggle two balls in one hand. Let's just not deal with that. That's something completely different. Now what interrupts allow you to do, what interrupts allow you to do is, t for AVR, it can take that single, uh, that single-handed system, throw it into the air. Oh, wrong letter. Wait for it to come back down, and then an interrupt occurs. And then it can switch code. It can now deal with B. Wait for B to complete itself, and then. I know I spelled switch wrong. And then it can switch back to the main code. And then it can just go back to A. Now interrupts in this case are handled um, by hardware. These are hardware based interrupts. Things like timers, pin changes, uh, serial communication. And these things are all called vectors. They're situations by which these things occur. So if we look at the data sheet for this, in order to deal with interrupts, uh, well, before I deal with that, those vectors I mentioned, you can find them here. So things like um, external pin interrupt, pin change, timer overflows, uh, data, tran data requests over various buses, even the uh, analog to digital converter, all have various vectors associated with them so that you can run bits of code when associated with those other things. So in order to get that to work you have to deal with a specific register, in this case the SREG register, the oop, try that again, the SREG register which is the AVR status register and what it, that bit we're dealing with is right here, uh, bit 7 or the I bit, the um, external interrupt bit. And that controls everything else. So all those vectors, when this bit is set, this bit right here, what it says is, okay, you, we can deal with those now. And there's a very specific way to deal with them. Thankfully though, because I know people have written in saying things like, oh, there are libraries to handle that. We're actually going to use a library this time. Uh, this is actually a really great site. It has almost every library I'm going to be using in videos. It's uh, nonguru.org slash avr dash libc. I'll put a this link to this in the description. This is the interrupt.h file. 
and in this are things that are methods and functions that allow you to deal with interrupts without having to dive into the data sheet and dig through all this superfluous data to find the information you need. So you don't have to worry about registers, bit shifting, that sort of thing. So things like if I hear all the vectors and which chips they pertain to. Uh, if I keep scrolling down, keep going, you find things like ISR, which is the interrupt service routine. This is the uh, routine that handles what happens when a certain vector occurs. And things like, if I keep going down, SEI and RETI, these things handle that interrupt bit. and says, okay, turn it on, or you could say, turn it off. So it's that simple with these libraries. So that's it for interrupts in general. I hope that paints a pretty broad picture of things we're going to be dealing with. Um, next video, I will be dealing with interrupts as it pertains to timers. So watch for that. But in the meantime, I really do suggest you go over this and read through the vectors, especially those that pertain to timers. So with that, I'm Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.